Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Paris. How are you doing this morning? I'm here to wake you up to set up the stage uh, for John Pascal. So good morning, hola. 大家早上好，欢迎 to Paris. So I'm Chris Leung, the Chief Marketing Officer of Schneider Electric, and I'm really excited to welcome you this morning. This is a very special week for Schneider in Paris. We are hosting two mega events. Let's see whether we have any guests. Any runners in this room for the marathon? Any runners? There we go. We've got some runners. So shout out to the runners. Good luck. Strong running this weekend. So this weekend, we are very proud and honored to be the title sponsor of Marathon de Paris, where we celebrate diversity, inclusion, and sustainability. Did you know that the Paris Marathon is also the world's first and only carbon neutral marathon in the world? Isn't that great? So we will be. Welcoming 55,000 runners from 145 countries, and shout out to the 5,900 Schneider Green runners, who are made up of our customers, partners, stakeholders, employees. That's going to be braving the 42-kilometer run. So now, the second mega event, which is why you're all here these two days, I welcome you to Innovation Summit Paris. Which is a flagship stop of our Innovation Summit World Tour, where we cover about 20 cities in the world. As a matter of fact, we are on the fourth stop this year. We already started in Sydney, in Delhi, and in Mexico last week, and now we're in Paris, where we will showcase to you our latest innovation in energy management and automation. And looks like we have a complete full house today. We are oversubscribed. We're welcoming over 5,000 customers, partners, media from over 80 countries over these next two days. We have prepared an exciting and amazing agenda for you to exchange with industry experts on key trends, technologies. We have plenary sessions. We have an IoT executive panel hosted by CNBC this morning. We'll be launching. Some new products for you to view for the very first time, and we have a 5,000 square meter innovation hub for you to touch and feel and really experience our innovation with our teams and some deep dive expert learning sessions. So be sure to check your Innovation Summit mobile app for all the details because you have a personalized agenda to your interest, and don't be shy to follow and share on Twitter. LinkedIn, your Facebook, and YouTube. So with that, let's roll. Get started.
Now, please welcome Chairman and CEO John Pascal Jliqua. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to Paris. Welcome to Schneider. Welcome to the Innovation Summit. Uh, I will correct Chris. I mean, you have to rephrase. Here you say good morning, and then after you don't say zhao shang hao, you say bonjour à tous. <laughs> and you know what? It's good to be home. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always troubling when you are in your country and you have to speak English. But I will commit that today I will speak to you in English, but with a strong French accent so that you know where you are, right? So what, what a drumming wake up, right? We wake up every morning in the 100 countries where we operate. We wake up Schneider with that kind of drum. Bullshit. We just do it for you. <laughs> we do it for you because you deserve it. Why do you deserve it? Because we organize for you the full French experience. We organize strikes. <laughs> and you still came, right? More seriously, France is really under the path of reform under President Macron, and it's something to be supported, but the collateral in our country is that there will be strikes. So enjoy it, because coming to Paris without a strike is like a meal without cheese, all right? <laughs> so, well, you deserve it first because of that. You deserve it also because on Sunday, there will be as... Chris said it's 6,000 green people running the Marathon of Paris together with the 50,000 other people. Well, I invite you to stay because that day, Paris is Schneider Green. I love Paris, but I love even better the Schneider Green Paris. So stay, be with us. It's an event, it's a party. Let's stay with us to share those good moments. And you deserve it also. You deserve all this drumming because I really personally appreciate that you give us the most precious thing you have with you, which is your time. That you come here, spend time with us, and I really wish that the next two days will be an intense two-way street dialogue on a moment of sharing where we all learn from each other. So my role now will be to make sure that in the next 30 minutes, I describe the global frame of what Schneider tries to do with you, on how we see the world, where we see the challenges, where we see the opportunities, on, on that we share all of this. You're going to hear, my commitment is that you're going to hear a lot about the eco-structure. If you don't hear about eco-structure, that means you have exited this hole, right? You are not with Schneider anymore. And to understand what we are trying to do with eco-structure, it's important to understand where the world is going and give you some data points about this, this evolution. While I was preparing this keynote this morning, uh, there was a part of my team which was saying on the title of what we do, my guys from um, uh, IT, my guys from industrial automation, they were telling us, uh, telling me, well, you should call that powering, uh, sorry, powering the digital economy. So uh, making sure that things uh, which are digital automation data centers are fully powered. And my guys of uh, EcoStructure Grid and Power will say, no, no, what we are doing is digitizing the power grid. These are the kind of debates that we love in France, right? We call them the French debates about words. Uh, um, to set everybody on an equal footing, because frankly, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. What we have to recognize is that the mission that we have at Schneider is powering on digitizing the economy. And actually, if you take a broader look at it, it's powering on digitizing life as a whole, in a more general sense. And, and I don't know how many people in, in this room have lived in emerging and poor countries. I've lived a part of my life in Africa, in China, at the beginning of, of the reform of China. Um, for everybody who's lived in those countries, you know that life is miserable if you don't have access to energy. Uh, it's clear. So energy is the first foundation of life. It's the first foundation of progress. It's the first foundation of, of education. And you could stop here. Now you just turn your head and you look at your teenagers. And for a teenager, which is representing the future, which is representing actually the present, life is visible if you don't have access to digital. 
because digital is your access to knowledge, to your communities, to your environment. It's being connected to the world. So at the end of the day, those two elements, power and digital, which feed each other, which breed and intertwine, uh, are the foundation, the base of life, of education, of progress, and of performance. So what we do at Schneider is very simple. is doing that, ensuring that combination of power and digital, which today has the same importance for the customers and the partners we work with, and what I'm going to try to show in the next 30 minutes are the growing interactions which are happening between those two worlds of power and digital. So one would say, OK, let's look at the history. Electricity is more the present and the past, and digital is the future. Well, I would just argue the contrary. When I look at our customers, when I look at what we do at Schneider, I would say that the present is digital. It's already digital with all and every of our customers. I look just at the past week I spent. I was in China two weeks ago during the weekend, and we are working with the Minister of Technology to push manufacturing in China 2025. So spreading the digital into the production that was known at the low-cost manufacturing of the world is getting all automated. Then moved on to Singapore, where we inaugurated a green building uh, with an excellent performance, well, the best performance in energy efficiency in, uh, in, in the territory. Then moving on to the US, working there again on industrial uh, e internet, uh, which is going into the automation of industry. Landed on Tuesday in France, and we inaugurated the new factory of Schneider, producing contactors, but based entirely on new technology. So digital is absolutely the present. And digital is getting accelerated and boosted by the names you see, see the, here, the Internet of Things, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. So we all know the story, the episode one of the Internet. We went through it. In the 90s, Internet came, and the Internet episode one was connecting people to people, five billion people. And we started, like always in those revolutions, by just digitizing the things that we are doing physically. Mails and reading on Yahoo our newspaper. We had not seen that things like Facebook, LinkedIn, Uber, Spotify were coming in our way, changing and revolutioning everything we do as individuals. The next episode of the Internet is the Internet of Things, connecting those 5 billion people to 30 to 50 billion machines. And it's happening now. And we are probably today exactly at the same stage of evolution with the Internet of Things as we were in the 90s with the Internet of People. So we start by digitizing things that we are doing physically, but more capabilities will come as data aggregates, as we apply to it, artificial intelligence and augmented reality. But for the community in this room, which is operating those technologies or integrating those technologies, the future is in front of us, but the present is already very largely digital. And rather than making the theory of the case, I would like to share a few examples that, that we are facing at Schneider or doing at Schneider. Tottenham, very reputed football, football team in the UK. When the customer comes to us and speaks about digitization, it's never, of course, it's never about technology. It's about a problem to solve. So the club or the operators of the stadium came to us to save energy. On applying digitization, normally on any kind of facility, we target 30% of savings. In this case, savings came at 20%, and already those energy savings paid for the investment realized to digitize the existing stadium. Come with that the collateral benefit that once installation is digitized, then the maintenance guys know exactly where things are going to happen or where the things have happened. So collateral of that, 30% reduction on unscheduled maintenance. So your efficiency on energy is increasing, your efficiency on the OPEX are increasing. With that also, the downtime is, is decreasing because remember the old paradigm where there is a problem, you have to look around to find the fault and the mistake. 
you go straight to the right point with the right tools and repair it much faster than before. So second gain is reduction, or third gain is reduction of downtime. And based on that, now what we see is that Tottenham is targeting to increase the customer satisfaction because of that better reliability and an easier way to navigate in a digitized environment. They are targeting a customer satisfaction, that means us, supporters, when we go there, of one third. So digital, you start by efficiency and you embark more collateral benefits as you keep going. Let's move on to uh, another, another example. Machine manufacturers. Somic, one of the flagship companies in the field of packaging machines. In this case, coffee capsule machines. Designing, redesigning uh, the whole, the whole uh, machine on the base of eco-structure machine. Targeting, which is quite classical when you do a machine, an increase in speed, therefore an increase in productivity. Gain, thanks to a new architecture of distribution of power, 40% in energy efficiency, which is a second differentiation to your customer. But actually, the biggest benefit that came here is the operator experience, because once the thing is fully digitized and the image is reported on the cloud, then you can, on a mobile tool, at the foot of the machine, diagnose what is happening without entering a dangerous machine, be guided to the intervention, be indicated on which place you need to intervene, and close professionally the process so that you make sure that the machine has been properly uh, repaired. Changing or switching gear, I'm going to Turkey with a fam famous dairy company, um, Eker. And Eker was building a new plant on is clearly reaching or targeting to be at the best level of digital manufacturing. And with that, with the, the first goal, primary goal of a better quality, a better traceability of dairy products, which as we well know in France can be very tricky. So deployed a full automated factory software and analytics to manage it based on our software company, Aviva portfolio of software, uh, beyond that superior quality, superior traceability, gain 15% on productivity and 15% in energy and labor efficiency. And all of this, of course, can only happen if you have a very solid digital infrastructure. And it may be a best kept secret, but Schneider is the biggest supplier of energy infrastructure to data centers. Why is that? Because we've been over the years building the full solution, inclusive of medium voltage, low voltage, secured power, racks, IT infrastructure, DCIM, BMS, so that we would be able to guarantee to those customers who are managing very critical mission of making sure we can click on the internet without interruption, zero downtime, make sure that they have a full and secured powertrain on automation chain. So here is an example uh, which is in sunny France, in Marseille, 5.9 reliability on the fact that the customer has used the modular architecture of EcoStructure allowed to reduce the time to the market by a factor of three to the delivery time of two months, which would have been very, very difficult without taking a tested, unvalidated solution. Just had it here on the slide that on the top of that, 90% of the energy of this data center is supplied from renewable, which is always better to manage or easier to manage when things are digitized because you adequate the profile of generation and consumption. You make them match as, as you manage those, those, um, those interactions. So that's about digitization. Digitization is already widely spread on the just the beginning. And I'll tell you why after we are just at the beginning of the usage of the data which are in our systems. Paradoxically, some people see electricity as a well-proven and historical technology. Well, I've been working personally for 32 years at Schneider Electric, so with people who speak electricity all the time. I tell you, I've never been as excited as today by the enormous evolution of electricity. Electricity is in full revolution. 
Few data points. I mean, I think the past two years were absolutely critical in making sure or kind of converging on the fact that in the next coming years, a large part of transportation will be moving to electrification. I don't know if all of us realize the magnitude of this earthquake. Transportation today represents more than 30% of the world energy consumption. That's a huge migration, even if only half of the quantity of vehicles gradually goes to electric, that's the biggest energy migration we've known in ages in the energetic landscape. On that one, this is becoming more electric. The thing which is also completely underestimated is the IT electricity consumption. IT is still a marginal part of the electricity consumption in, in the world, 10%. But as we see data piling up, data being multiplied every two years, but before it was more storage of data, now you've got artificial intelligence, you've got things like bitcoins, blockchains, which are big energy guzzlers, piling up on everything. We see that thing accelerating. Today, you've got some projections saying that the energy consumption of the IT segment should be above 20% every year in the next coming years. The industry is working on its productivity, so it's probably shaved by at least 10%. But that still means that this part of the energy demand should be and will be the fastest growing still in the next years to come. I tell you, for Schneider, it's very, very important because over the past 15 years, we've built the data center as the largest segment of Schneider, and that's the fastest growing. And we are watching that with a lot of interest, and we are developing more technologies to be able to cope with the demand and to cope with the pressure that IT is pushing on, on the network. And the last one to be realized, which is the source of energy, right? We come from a world where energy was very centralized and going into big transmission lines. And suddenly, you see decentralization coming up. And I'll come back on this subject on complementing the grid. So there is a major evolution to be operated by the distribution operators. Uh, in digitization to be managing all these new sources of energy. And at the same time, customers will be moving more and more to microgrids, decentralized generation as a natural complement to the grid. Is that the future where it has already started? I mean, take the example of Milford County in Connecticut. This is a city that many know for the schools, for the high tech industry. It's a community of 50,000 people. The first subject they were trying to resolve here was reliability of the grid. They were also looking for better cost of energy by putting an automated microgrid combining CHP, heat on power cycle, and renewable. On digitization, they managed to have 15 to 30 percent of savings on their energy spend, plus a better reliability of the supply. Well, take another example, which is much closer to here, the CKA of La Somme, which is there again a grid for the community uh, that decided to embark and welcome 120 megawatts of wind farms, which makes it greener, but also more unstable, which is a collateral effect of having renewable. Well, with that, with using eco-structure uh, distribution management system, they managed to integrate those renewables on the payback on the cost of energy is four years, below four years. And it also, that digitization helps to optimize the maintenance. So we see more and more in many countries, all the countries, those kind of applications developing. Of course, they come as a natural choice in the countries where there is no grid or where the grid is weaker, right? So when you look at this and you look at those two words on power on digitization, they used to be quite monolithic. And what you do today are a parallel transformation, which actually goes together and breeds the two phases of those two evolutions. In IT, after a very big movement to the cloud, which was a marker of the past years, you see now the development of the edge. People are back on the computing on the edge for reason of 
quick latency or no latency. They want the reaction to be very close to the machine, so you see more edge computing taking place at the bottom of machines, inside of plants. Nobody wants to be dependent on the communication with the cloud to manage mission-critical uh, applications. I was recently visiting a retail chain. Uh, they don't want to be interrupted in their billing to customers if there is a problem of transmission. So you see more and more things now coming back on the edge. And of course, you want to benefit from the cloud for aggregation reasons, for scale reasons, for computing reasons, for more, con uh, more, um, more capabilities, also for machine learning, because it's only if you have all that data that you can learn from that mass of data. But at the same time, you need to download that learning on those capabilities back to the edge, because this is where the action is taking place. We also want, as human beings, to be in control of our installations. It's difficult for people who manage mission-critical applications to imagine that everything would be remote, very far away from there for things which might need for human beings to take back control of what is happening on their installation. And in the field of power, while the past was the grid and things were coming from the central, we're going to see more and more that, that interaction between the edge, the edge grid, on the grid, and all of this, that, that combination or that emergence of that decentralization is only possible if you have a strong digitization of the system which manages the interaction that there is between the central where you can mutualize resources and the local where people want to be more autonomous, they want to be quicker, and they have to get, they want to have the local control. And this is where Schneider is positioned. From the beginning, and I would say now for 20 years, we've believed in the convergence of digital and power together for more efficiency. And if you try to define Schneider, it's very simple. We are a technology company. And this is why in this room, there are many people who are our partners. They integrate solutions. They use the bricks of technology to offer to their customers their own innovation. We are in our industry, the company that privileges the most partners on accessing the market with people with whom we work together to develop innovation. And when you think about it, and I said it at the beginning, our technologies ensure that life is on, that life is powered, that life is digitized everywhere for everyone on at every moment. And remember that it's a big challenge because you have got today on Earth 2 billion people who don't have access to the right level of energy. The paradoxical situation is that there are even today more people on Earth who have access to a mobile than people who have access to a reliable source of energy. Picture of Schneider, last year very focused company on what I described, 25 billion euro, a growing 5% of our revenues devoted to R&D, 10,000 engineers across the world developing bricks of technology, and already, to tell you how much digital is a present, almost 50% of our business in the field of digitization. Connected products, edge controls, analytics, software, AI, that's already 45% of what Schneider is doing. So, in the next coming two days, you're going to be bombarded with ecostructure, right? It's not dangerous. It's good. <laughs> so, ecostructure is our digitization uh, ecosystem. Uh, it was born, actually, in 1997. So I know that many companies have had a very recent revelation, a come to Jesus moment about Internet of Things in the past three years. We started to work on that in 1997. For the people who've been working with Schneider already at that time, it was called Transparent Factory, bringing for the first time in our industry the world of Internet on the shop floor for automation at that time completely criticized by the profession. Too expensive, not predictable enough, not fast enough, you don't do professional stuff with the internet, this is for my son to mail, that kind of stuff. Stubbornly, 
we've kept working on converging the world of the Ethernet on the world of real time. And we came with the first version of EcoStructure that we launched in 2008. So EcoStructure is 10 years old, which means tons of install base of experience, of learning in that world of the Internet of Things. And we relaunched EcoStructure Reloaded with more cloud capability and more analytics and more software capability two years ago. So, very simple, EcoStructure, we define it as an ecosystem. And that ecosystem is a combination of a platform, of expertise, of communities working together on the platform, and of a set of digital lifecycle tools which are here not only to bring efficiency and productivity in the field of operations, but also to bring that efficiency and productivity since the beginning of the, from the beginning of the idea, from the inception of the idea, from the design phase. So I'm going to scroll through that, so those invariants of ecostructure. Let's start by the platform. I won't dwell too long on that one, because I'm sure you've been already explained this, but very simple connected products which can integrate in Schneider systems or in third party systems, because we have very strong guideline of developing our products on open standards that we share with other companies in the industry. Edge controls adapted to the specificities of each and every of the application that we serve. And a layer of digital services, whatever their form, application, software, AI, which we want to be agnostic. We know that all of our customers, because of the history, because of acquisitions, because of whatever, they are facing a very scattered and very diverse install base, and we want them to be able to aggregate and manage their company across all the systems they have to manage. Would they be Schneider, or would they be from a different origin? Of course, Schneider is always better. Then, all of this is supported by a cloud infrastructure that we can build on-premise, or that we can build on the cloud. Um, and then, this is supported by cybersecurity services. We have cybersecurity teams who work very closely with uh, your teams to make sure that the whole chain is end-to-end -end cyber secure. We have six domains in ecostructure that you see a building, power, IT, machine, plant, and grid that are combining today, so together, sorry, to serve a full application. And if I go into one example, the one of the data center, a data center would typically combine ecostructure building, ecostructure IT, ecostructure power into one complete and consistent system to respond to the whole need of the data center application. Again, one, uh, one example which is very recent, one that we did on the other side of the world in sunny Brisbane in Australia, Full data center where, of course, we've got reliability, efficiency, and stuff. But here, the customer wanted to optimize his utilization of assets. On respect to the old design, achieve 15% of improved asset utilization. Second point, expertise. What we discovered at Schneider when we started our journey to digitization is that customers were not expecting that we would be talking products or technology. They wanted to talk about, which is normal, about their problem, their industry. And we had the technology guys, but we didn't have the knowledge of applications. So it was a costly, it was a long journey for Schneider over the past 10 years, but we've built gradually a community of 15,000 application and software engineers, people who can speak the language of oil and gas, of mining metals of, and minerals, of food and beverage, of water waste water, of buildings, of hospitals, of utilities, of data centers, of machines, of production lines, and to be able to sit with the experts of the industry and understand their business to propose the best solution. Of course, we don't want to do their business but we want to provide the best experience related to that business. 
So today we've got those 15,000 applications on software engineers and they add up to our R&D engineers to supply innovation. And what I see today is that there is as much innovation in the face of the design of the system as there is in the face of the design of the products on the bricks of technology. Moving on to the next brick of infrastructure, it's about the community. A platform is only where the community that works on it. And for us, the community, the target that we have with infrastructure is to make it a very open ecosystem on which people meet, exchange services, exchange added values, and solve together problems. Where are we today as we speak? We've got today 500,000 sites which are already deployed on infrastructure, which are as many opportunities for other people to provide services. We've got 20,000 developers and integrators working to develop innovation on infrastructure. We've got 650,000 service providers and integrators which are also connected to the community to connect together and build solutions together. And to take another example, you've got 3,000 utilities uh, who have been associated to the platform so that they can propose their services to people who are consuming energy. And we build the platform. We have a very strong belief also at Schneider. It's always wrong to develop technology which is already off the shelves at somebody else's place. So we've built a platform with the big names of IT that you see on this, on this slide. And digitalization is growing exponentially. Like we have last year, at the end of last year, 1.6 million assets on the management. What does it mean? They are hosted on our own cloud. There is much more hosted on on-premise clouds, but those ones are replicated on our cloud. And this has been growing 25% only uh, during last year. Accelerating on the beginning of the year is even more promising. Take one example here, which is a flagship building that Deloitte did in Holland. It's a net positive building. It's called The Edge, one of the most advanced European buildings in terms of energy performance, producing more energy than it consumes, actually. See my Dutch friend here smiling. Uh, that's one example where the customer used ecostructure for the level two and level one, but decided to go with a third party partner to make an ad hoc on adapted uh, uh, um, application to monitor their building. And this is a kind of openness that you get on, on ecostructure. So now I'm going to move to my last point concerning ecostructure, which is the life cycle tools. When you embark about digitization, we started digitization with automation. And automation was a lot about digitizing the operation cycle, the OPEX cycle, for more efficiency. But what we see today, when people build a manufacturing or build an infrastructure, 30% of the construction is, in fact, reconstruction. Because people make mistakes in the design. And there are multiple mistakes of transfer between the people who make the design and people who make the operations. And there is nearly no feedback loop from people who operate back into the design to improve the design. So what we have embarked to do for each of the verticals of infrastructure is to make sure that we would have one integrated life cycle journey, digital cycle, with a digital twin to make sure that we cut all the inefficiencies that go across the design on the CAPEX cycle to the OPEX cycle. And I would like just to share with you the example of what we do in industry, because I'm very proud and very happy that after three years of discussion, which have been kind of publicized in the press, we finalized last month the merger of our operation software of Schneider together with the design software of Aviva to propose for the first time in the industry a complete integrated cycle for the digitization of manufacturing from the inception of the idea to the design to the build into the world of operation and maintenance. So a complete portfolio of capabilities to deliver the function that you see here, which are centered in, on monitoring and control, which is a place where the assets meet the operation but offering collaborative engineering, planning and scheduling, process optimization, asset performance, 
on significant improvements in workforce efficiency. What it means is that for people who are designing the most complicated manufacturing on Earth, the capacity to integrate everything from A to Z with the best renowned tools on the planet into one cycle, one digital twin from the design into the operations. On this, we want to replicate it on all the other ecostructure that we, uh, that we deal with. What are the benefits of, of technology? Because here I spoke about examples, but what do we see normally when people embark on the journey of digitization? What are the benefits they can get access to? Energy efficiency, this is where our history started. 65% this is probably the maximum of what we do when we attack very solidly and in depth what, what the facilities of, of our customers with an average of 30% of, of efficiency. Productivity, 50% of productivity on CapEx at the level of integration by using a more plug and play on optimized system. Minus 30% in OPEX for the operation, helping the operations of operators on the shop floor. Reliability with fewer percent, uh, 50, half of the accident, the capacity to predict issues, to prevent issues, to intervene before things happen, and when they happen, to be much more pointed uh, for the intervention. And finally, the goal to go to zero emission. Schneider has decided to go by 2030 to be carbon neutral. We want also to be renewable 100. We want to also to be EP 100. And it's not Schneider only. We are together with hundreds of companies at the global level. That will become the new norm. But there is one point that I want to mention, which is not often mentioned when we speak about digitization. As the CEO of Schneider, my biggest preoccupation, my biggest nightmare is safety for my employees and my customers. We don't want anybody to be wounded or to be at risk by working at Schneider. And digitization, thanks to augmented reality, is a fantastic way to reduce the risk of error and to ensure a far better safety of the operators and people who operate in our company. And that's probably the biggest unqualified benefit that you get with digitization. So as we are closing uh, this keynote, I think many of us, and I'm part of them, say how far are we from a digital enterprise? Is that that difficult to get access to those new set of capabilities which shit on the cloud, which shit on a company that would aggregate its data? The reality is that the world is IoT is more accessible than we generally think and that you generally think. I know that there are people who are newcomers that will say you have to re-instrument everything, put actuators, sensors everywhere. Very often your buildings, your factories, your machines are already connected. They're already automated. Statistics say that only 10% of the data generated are utilized. And why is that? Because the computing was only on site. So now move from connected on site to connecting the connected onto the cloud. On aggregating your data into one repository. On applying to that mass of computing that you can't afford side by side. And suddenly you will move from the management of the company side by side to the whole management of your company integrated you will be able to bring back information on mobile tools to your operators on site. You will be able to support the people on site by a few very precise competencies which are in a remote control center where you can mutualize your best specialists so that they can help the people on the ground. You can go from reactive to proactive and you can really get to a new scale and acquire a lot more services because suddenly your whole company is repositioned on a digital lake. So digital is not far away. It's not re-instrumenting everything and redoing everything. It's just applying common sense, managing your company in a different manner, and bringing new services on what you are already doing. 
Few examples here. When you go to that level three of digital services, and this is only Schneider, that's not our partners, we've got already 40 modules, which we call advisors, which bring services to your installation, with it becoming from Schneider or from somebody else. Take the building, we can put digital doctors on your HVAC on cheaters. We can put digital doctors on your power distribution, of course. We can put digital doctors on your IT systems so that you are warned of the risks that could occur to your installation. And that's already on the market, and more is coming from our partners. So that closes my introduction to our two days of Innovation Summit. I think we are facing, all of us, a great opportunity of changing the way we manage our companies. We are just at the beginning of the period where our installations will be connected as we learn to be connected on the internet as individuals 20 years ago. So again, welcome to Paris, welcome to Schneider, welcome to the Innovation Summit, and make sure that you spend time with our people to debate the future of our industry. Thank you. Thank you.